And when she had found it, she called her friends and her neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the peace which I had lost. Likewise, I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repented. Amen. Amen. What does this word repentant mean? Repent means to change one's mind for the better. Mm -hmm. Not merely to forsake sin, but to change one's attitude toward it and his love for it. Mm -hmm. Hence, it is de demanded by God as a consideration on one of the conditions of forgiveness and grace. God just not only wants you, amen, to stop sin, but he wants you to change your attitude towards him. Repent simply means I'm walking in one direction and I'm changing and now I'm going in another direction. I don't have any affection toward what I was doing before. I don't have love for it anymore. Repent, amen, means to make an about face. And we see that there are some, some of the, amen, people in the Bible that had a mind to repent. And there, has, there were some people in the Bible that got mad when they did repent. Isn't that something that we try to do better, but they get mad when we try to do better? When we change our lives and not do what we was once doing, and they can't get mad at us? Here we see in our text that the publicans were the people in the local community that accepted the job to collect taxes for the Roman government. The Roman government came into the Holy Land of that area, took over everything. And these local people were people, indigenous people, that always lived there. And they said, I don't want to be oppressed, I don't want to go through the struggle and the hardship, so I'm going to side with our oppressors, and I'm going to take up taxes for the oppressors, amen, from the people I grew up with. Mm -hmm. And the people in the community called them publicans. Put them on the same level as harlots and sinners. I would take say that it says the publicans and sinners. We see that in the previous verse, we find that Jesus, or in the previous chapter, chapter 14, we find that Jesus was going into the houses of the chief publicans. Mm -hmm. The chief Pharisee, rather, I'm sorry, the chief Pharisee. And the sect of the Pharisee, the chief publicans invited all the sect of the Pharisees into his house. And all the lawyers, the big wheels, his golf buddies, <laughs> well, the new people in the community. Invited them over to, for brunch to hear Jesus teach. Jesus, when he left out of that particular place, amen, he went through Jericho, he went through Samaria, he, he went through different places, amen, doing what God had called him to do on his way to Jerusalem to die. But before he got to Jerusalem, he had more redemptive work to do. And being in the houses of the lawyers, the learned, the school, the ones that should have been receiving his doctrine, mm -hmm. being in that house, did not want to receive his doctrine. On his way doing his redemptive work, we find out that some of the publicans and sinners that may have heard the word of God before, but turned the dead ear. Now when Jesus came, amen, in that particular place of living, they drew not to him. They didn't just want to stand out on the outside listening, but they drew not to him. They beat the publicans. Uh, the publicans tried to beat the Pharisees. In other words, the sinners beat the church folk to church. Amen. I can't get no I can't get no help in here. Hey, I said that the sinners beat the church folks. For prayer, I mean. And these publicans, amen, decided to draw nigh to the Jesus. Jesus received. 
see them. Because you see that they had a change of heart. And we see that the church folks, the Pharisees, the scribes, they stood back and they got mad and they began to pronounce something. They said, He, what kind of person is he? He's accepting sinners. He's accepting people, amen, that are, amen, not very much well to do. They're on the lower grade, though. The scum of the city. He's accepting the prostitutes. I'm not going to go ahead and say that. The criminals. The thieves and the cutthroats. The liars and the cheaters. He's accepting. He's going to eat any one of these souls. A problem. Amen. They begin to condemn Jesus. But Jesus taught them the word. And he began to speak a parable. In our Christian education department, co pastor was teaching that a parable, amen, is a, a earthly, a heavenly saying with an earthly meaning. Amen. amen. Just, just a natural meaning that you can understand. He began to say that there was a woman who had finally gathered enough money to where she can have a little bit put back. Mm -hmm. About 10 silver coins. Each coin was worth about 17 cents. So it really wasn't much. But she had this money saved up and put back. It wasn't base metal like iron, all right, or brass. It was silver. <laughs> Something that was valuable to her. 17 cents. Amen. It was about in that community or in that time, 17 cents was a day's wage. Right? When I go to work, amen, and I work eight hours, amen, I believe my pay is about, it's pretty good. <laughs> Hallelujah. At that time, 10, I'll have a little bit of money saved up. Hallelujah. About $6,000, I believe. Months time, I think, a no, couple of months time. Amen. But in that day, it was a day's wage. One 17 cent silver coin was about a day's wage. And when she was maybe counting her money, seeing what she could do, budgeting her money, she dropped one of them in the dirt in her house. And when it fell in the dirt, it disappeared because she couldn't find it anymore. About that time, they built their houses, they met, and they had dirt floors. I don't know about y'all, but. I remember the time when some of my family members and some of us, when our ancestors built houses, they had dirt floors. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen your grandmama sweeping the dirt? Mm -hmm. I have. Hey, that the bad guy who brought somebody along the way. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> and this woman dropped one of those silver coins into the dirt, and it disappeared that she couldn't find it. And it worried her that she couldn't sleep. So we find it, man. She go and get in a candle. And she lit the candle. The Bible says she lit a candle looking for that call. This is the picture of Jesus Christ. Amen. To warn us. When we Adam sin, we were lost. Come on, my. Adam means a man that has been brought. Amen. From the dead, the dust of the grass. That's what his name literally means. Amen.
Hallelujah. Yes, sir. There's something that every religion do what they're supposed to do as far as practicing what they believe. But when it comes to us, so we don't feel we have to practice nothing. Muslims, they carry that little man around. Good Lord, I'm saying. They go, they tell them to carry that little man around. When it comes a certain time of the day, amen, everything stops. They lay the little man out. I don't care if they're right out in the middle of the street. I don't care if they're right out in traffic. Hallelujah. I don't care if traffic, foot traffic, and walking up and down the sidewalk there.
Eat that, enjoy it, then know you come over for the rest of the week. You will lose weight, weight real quick. Forget to the credit and all this. You will lose weight, weight real quick. Eat one time this week. And don't eat no more. That's what we do with the Word of God. We come to church Sunday, eat one time a good meal, and then go to the rest of the week. Don't eat Just going, amen, looking, and that's it. 
That means day after day, you're going to find what you done lost. That means day after day, you're finding out a process what you need to get back. Anybody been trying to get benefits? How long have you been trying to get them? Three years. Three years. You, are you seeking some benefits? Huh? About six months. How long have anybody ever been seeking some benefits? See? 18 months. 18 months. You didn't get them the first month. Why are you seek the second month, Steve? Why are you seek the third month, the fourth, the fifth, the tenth, the sixth, the, the fifteenth month? Why are you still seeking? Why? Well, something belongs to you. It belongs to you. When you could work, you did work, and you paid taxes. Now that you can't work, amen, the government said that our stipulation to give you benefits to help you out. Amen. And I'm going to my benefits. Amen. So I'm going to diligently send my benefits amen. until I get them. Right. I release benefits to you, son. Amen. In Jesus' name. Yeah. I release benefits to you. Lord, I release benefits to you, Lord. In Jesus' name. One y'all, if not all three of y'all, y'all going to get some benefits. When you do, I want you to come back and testify what God said. Yes. Because you're seeking diligent. What's the next thing she does, sis? Um, she, she sought after those, after oh, the corn till she found it. Mm -hmm. She did find it. Yes. I just come to let you know you're going to find something. Yes. If you look for it, you're going to find it. Yes. You are the only. You are right there. You keep looking, you're going to find it. You're going to find it. You're looking for something. You're going to find it. I see you wandering. You're just wandering. I, you, you look like me. Amen. I've been just wandering. Listen, I was standing and I was just, just like that. My boy looked at me. He said, Daddy? He said, you look like a statue. I thought you was froze. <laughs> Amen. This is where we are sometimes. Our mind gets out. Get out there. Amen. You're going to find it. Keep seeking for it. Right? When she found it, when she found it in the dirt, I don't know how long it took her to find it. Amen. My wife told me something that's very, that was very profound to me. Over to the house when I was landscaping around the house, I go out, I pick rocks up, and lo and behold, even more, I go out and there's another rock that popped up in the grass, in the yard. Where the rocks keep coming from? Amen. When they landscaped over that place, amen, the, the dirt, amen, whatever that was compacted together was pushing the rocks up. And over time, the rocks started coming up out of the ground. Amen. God's going to start putting. If you do what God tells you to do, some stuff is going to come out. Amen. It's going to come out all the time. It may not come out. When you think about it, come out. But it will come out. She swept the house. She found that 17 cent coin, which was about a day's wage. Amen. Then she went and she got her friends. This is the kicker. Hold on, sis. Hold on. This is the kicker. I began to read. You know what that woman done? After she found that money, after she found the money, after she found the money, she went to the pawn store. She took the money. She bought some balloons. She bought cake and ice cream. She bought streamers. Went and hung up in her house. She invited her friends to come over and have a party. That money that I lost way back there, I found it. Y'all come to help me rejoice and celebrate. She took the money that she found and spent it and had a party. Why in the world would the woman do that for? Because it wasn't the fact, I guess, that she uh, lost the money or the money was so valuable to her. But the fact of the matter is that when she found it, she knew, amen, hallelujah, that what she had lost, she found. Hallelujah. She found the joy of looking until she found it. Amen. Was so profound to her that she went and had a party with her friends. She took that money that she had found and she blessed somebody else. Amen. The thing that you have lost, you need to find it. Because when you find it, it's going to bless somebody else. Amen. Amen. Your prayer life, because you pray, 
God is going to bless somebody else. Yeah. Because you fast and you can worry about God is going to bless somebody else. Yeah. Amen. Amen. People are looking on your life. You have to stay right there. Yeah. Yeah. Steve, you have to stay right. My God, is Steve messed up. What am I going to do? That's what they're thinking. Amen. 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 God has given us spiritual gifts. Yeah. And we're going to lost some of them. Mm -hmm. Those gifts, people are depending on you. Amen. Amen. To bless them. What is it? The Bible says that a thousand angels rejoice in heaven over one sinner that repents. Yeah. Turns from doing, amen, that which is a carnality in the world to that which is doing what God called them to do. Amen. amen. It's something that the world I mean, looks upon us and we're down and out all the time. It's something the world looks on us and we're struggling on. Can't get no help from you. Some of us are struggling. Yeah. You know, it's something that the Lord will have to we go through all the time. Some of the time, yeah. But all the time. We should be going through all the time, saints. We should be going through all the time. You should have a testimony sometime. Why? Because the Bible declared that people are overcome by our testimony. So when you begin to testify the things that God has done for you, don't think, amen, that it's called you bragging or no, no, no. God did this for me. Amen. I didn't do it. God did it for me. I'm walking in the blessings and the favor of God. If you never had any blessings or favor in your life, then what are you here for? Amen. I had to correct a young man on the job. He said, I don't agree with all of these, amen, terrible evangelists that's got all these millions of dollars and big old houses and nice cars. I don't agree with all that. I, 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 no, no. Something rose up in me and I looked at him. I said, hold on there, brother. I said, when that, that intelligent evangelist way back then received the call from God to go out, amen, to the world and preach the gospel, didn't nobody give him no money. Amen. Didn't nobody go with him. He had to go by himself. I was riding the kid at Copeland. He said he got that little white station wagon, put his family in it, and then worked on his own off that thing trying to do what God to do. Yeah. Didn't nobody help them? Didn't nobody hold it? They run that long way mm -hmm. And the struggle. He said, I got a, a revelation from God to be out of debt. I will not be borrowing any money. I'll trust in God and give him my time yes. and uh, trust in God to prosper me. And he said, for years I went. Not indigenous myself to the world, but trying to live for God. Yes. Now that he's up on the top, and he has a multi-million dollar, amen, church, big congregation, took time, amen, to try to do take. One of his testimonies is that he wanted to get the word of God in him. He got a little tape play. Y'all know what's the old set tape? And he played, amen, tapes of his pastor. He played them over and over and over and over again, listening to them over and over until he got that word down on the inside of him. So the Lord had the little tape play on that. Trying to get the word of God in here. Amen. Now when the word of God got in here, amen, and it started producing fruit. And God, amen, took that spiritual fruit and put it in the physical fruit. Well, he could give him a nice car, a nice house, amen. Now he has a multi-million dollar media where he's on TV and he can get the word out a whole lot easier. Amen. Whole bunch of people. He got satellites and all this stuff. He still got a paper, thank God for giving to him. And now he got people killing into his ministry. God said, men were killing to your book, that's the word of God. Amen. Now when it comes, amen, and I take what God has blessed me, and I prosper myself. Hallelujah. Where does that lead, amen, that person that's looking on? You don't know what I had to go through to get to where I am. Amen.
give it my word. God will prosper you just for you. He prosper you to bless somebody else. Hope you got something out of the way.